Hold on, I need a pump up. Focus. Not sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Dealing with animals around your pond can seem like a pretty impossible task, but there are some pretty simple ways that you can help ensure the safety of your fish. What are some common predators to koi fish? Herons are found on essentially every continent aside from Antarctica, and they're very commonly found snatching up koi fish from ponds. We will even come across them at our store. I'm so sorry to do this, but can I put you on hold? I have to go chase a heron away from my koi pond. Land predators, depending on where you live, like raccoons, opossums, fox, mink, and muskrats, even cats can pose a threat to your koi. Bullfrogs and turtles can eat smaller fish and can migrate to your pond, especially if you live near another water source. Being mindful of predators when determining the size, depth, and overall construction of your pond can be extremely helpful. Making sure your pond is deep enough is super important to make sure that no land animals or predators can walk into it. Another key aspect to making sure that your fish are safe is to add some sort of place to hide, like an enclosure inside of your pond. We will often build a cave into our ponds. They're usually large, corrugated tubes built into the pond, hidden by large boulders. Completely hidden from view, but with an opening for fish to swim in and out of if they feel threatened. We recently did a renovation for a homeowner where we incorporated a large cave inside the pond to protect their catfish. Be sure to check out the link to watch the video. Even though this is super helpful, it's not a guarantee. Certain animals will wait for the fish to come back out. Here are some other simple things that you can add to your pond to help keep animals away. Herons are relatively solitary animals and fake herons will deter real herons from coming near the pond. Fake alligators will scare away lots of different types of predators and they can make for cool decorations. Another cool decoy that you can add to your pond if you can see behind me is a swan. Not only does it make it look really pretty, but swans are very territorial and that will help deter a lot of the herons or other sort of large birds from coming to your pond. Another simple thing that you can add and incorporate to your pond is actually tying either fishing wire or a guitar string to your pond, raising it that way when the birds try to land on it, it'll actually bounce. This is strong enough and transparent so they're not going to be able to see it. It's not going to take away from the look of your pond, but it really does help protect the fish. By simply just weaving it around in different patterns like a zigzag, it'll help ensure any location that they try to access it won't be large enough for them to be able to land into the pond itself. Some of you may notice that you have frogs or bullfrogs or toads in your pond this time of year. One way to prevent them from staying is by having some sort of moving water, whether it's an aeration machine or a bubbler, or you can also add a waterfall or a fountain. One creative way that Tom Sandstrom recommended to me was also just playing music, whether it's having a Bluetooth so whether it's just playing music off of your phone, getting Bluetooth speakers, or just any sort of music would help make things think that there's people outside and that'll deter them from wanting to come onto the property. Unless your playlist is too fire, because then they're gonna- Oh, then they're gonna have a dance party. <laughs> I actually have a koi pond at my house and when I first started to actually go outside in the spring and really try to learn about my pond, I noticed every morning between 5 and 6 I had a massive blue herring that would come and actually scoop up my fish. Like what Tom Sandstrom said to another customer, the music really did help. I actually incorporated um, off of Amazon like cheap little Bluetooth rock speakers and I would play it in the morning between 5 and 6 just to kind of help deter. And also I bought a blue herring decoy actually from Garden State Koi and that has helped amazingly. I have not seen the blue herring in the morning anymore. Um, probably in the good two, three month range. I really haven't noticed any sort of activity. One thing too that Tom had also mentioned to me was that if we were planning on staying outside a lot to actually have your dog or some sort of animal outside because that will also help determine it. Granted, I have a very small corgi so he's not very ferocious looking but just having some sort of animal outside will usually deter spookable animals. Send me a picture. I will 100% Joey is a superstar. He will take over. <laughs> We do have a couple of things out here that you can see, but there's a lot more inside of the store, so let's go take a look. Ah! Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh God, there we go. Okay, please hold. I have a feeling you're putting that in the video. Uh, maybe. <laughs> So over here, we have an example of a fake little cave that you can add to your pond if it's not built in already. It has little holes so the smaller fish can access it and the larger access point that way 
a lot of fish can be able to kind of go in really quickly if they notice that a predator is coming. So in the corner of our store, you can see a lot of different examples of the decoys that I had mentioned earlier. The blue herring, this one is particularly lifelike. So as opposed to having like a metal statue or something like that, that would be more of a deterrent because it looks more realistic. We also have nets in different sizes depending on the size of your ponds. That way you can ensure that the entire uh, width length is covered to ensure the maximum amount of security for your fish. And it also has little weights on it and little stakes that way it's actually secured into the property. So in our greenhouse, if you wanted to incorporate live plants, we have a few here that are really good examples that you can add that'll add not only shade, but protection for your fish. So we have water lettuce and some hyacinths in here. So these will grow rapidly. And as you can see, it kind of blocks the surface. So predators from a bird eye view would not be able to see inside of your pond. Another great example and aesthetically pleasing, the water hyacinths have beautiful flowers. So not only does it serve as a protection for your fish, but it adds a really nice color to your pond as well. So the pond that's located in front of our store is a great example of incorporating live plants to not only add to the aesthetics, but to add protection. You can see some water lilies that are in there and other sort of plants that are kind of sitting right at the surface to ensure not only protection from that bird eye view, but to also add as a way that the fish can eat. They can eat the algae and actually the root that will serve as a multi-purpose thing because that's the only thing that I can think of really quickly. Tezzo! Question! Yeah. Here's Tom Tezzo and he's going to explain a great way to be able to incorporate plants to add protection and aesthetics to your pond. Yes, definitely. Adding plants to your pond is actually a really important way not only to beautify the pond, but also a great way to add protection and actual additional food that the fish might need to survive. We definitely use a lot of different types of plants. We'll use seasonal plants like tropical water lilies where you'll get a nice big leaf, nice flowers. Right now we have some in the pond really young, but in a month or two, they're gonna be huge. It provides amazing cover for the fish. Um, and they can also munch on some of the undergrowth. You might get a little algae on there. It's good food for them. Parrot's feather, uh, red stem or regular parrot's feather is another great provider uh, for coverage and also additional food. And then we also go into hardy water lilies, which is probably one of our uh, easiest plants to take care of. They can come back every year, get bigger and bigger. We have multiple colors and different varieties of, of petals that you can choose from. Um, but those are the ones that really, really, really add to the pond that actually, like I said, add some protection and also some additional food that they might need. I knew we threw out a lot of information for you guys. So if you have any questions based on the predator that you're looking to prevent accessing your pond or just to make sure that you're keeping the aesthetics of your pond, feel free to give us a call or stop into the store and we can definitely help suggest something for you. As always, don't forget to like and to subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss any of our videos. Thank you.